Hi guys, welcome back to the MVM show. I'm here with the OGs of the MVM show, Thomas and Travis. Travis, not so much Thomas, it's kind of sad actually, but a lot of people have been asking where Travis has been. Here he is. I've been, right I've here. been here. Well, I haven't been here, but I've been existing. Yeah. Thriving or surviving? Thriving, man. Yeah. Thriving. When's the last time you've been on a on the podcast? It's been a long time. Travis went it's already. Been, Travis already. Hey, dude, he never wins. Hey, man. Get, you know get, us, get us a crack in there, Thomas, in, in the mic there. Oh. They took the There was only two Mountain Dews left So I ha- I'm having a Juneberry Red Bull A small one Eight ounce I don't really need that You're gonna I, get stuck one in the f- I stuck one in the freezer last night mm. Walmart thing came And I was like This feels like cans I Opened up and it was Red Bull So I stuck one in the freezer then I woke up this morning. I was like, "Oops, oh no!" Did it explode? No, it didn't. Oh, thank fortunately, God. yeah, I'd have been in trouble. I did that with a NOS, and it blew up. I think. Oh, just everywhere. A big can. Yeah. Oh, the big, the uh, yeah. big ones with, uh-huh. the, with the bottle cap top. <clears throat> yeah, I seen the ugliest thing I ever seen today. I'm going coming back from a desto, and so there's a whole like there's a whole trailer thing full of those uh, Tesla pickups. Uh huh. You seen those? Ugliest thing you've ever seen in there's, your life. There's, there's one there running was, around town. Yeah, I seen it. I seen it when I was coming over here. Mm-hmm. I was like, that thing is hideous. I haven't seen one in person yet. You wouldn't take a duck hunting. Yeah, all the ducks. Someone was saying there was some ugly. issues with it or something. I don't like know. other trucks. Besides were, ugliness. Yeah, it's ugly. Are those all wheel drive or four wheel drive? Well, you can't even haul nothing in the back. There's like a glass. You can't pull thing nothing. Goes, no, there's there, there's no bed. Mm. I seen that. Yeah, on the pictures, I just didn't know if they had like a. That doesn't work. Uh, what you might call it, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I don't know. What are they doing? Well, the reason I wanted to get them over here because I try not to bug them too much. We're all pretty busy, and it's just easy for me because it's at my house. But one of the reasons was this is the three hundredth episode of the MVM show. I was trying to hit that like into January. I thought it's pretty cool. It's a good little landmark. So, anyways, we're hitting it now, and kind of was wanting talent here. I think, but he's. Duck hunting, or not duck no, hunting. He went golfing. <laughs> he better not be duck hunting. He went golfing he went for golfing. Uh, Tom's birthday, yeah. I think, right? Uh, so, kind of forgot about that this morning, so I text Tom for his birthday. He, you and him are a lot closer in age than I thought. He's only 52, right? He turned 52? I think so. And you're 51? I'm 51. I thought, for some reason, I thought you guys were, I thought you were about three or four years younger than him. No, uh, huh. we're, not, we're not that far. Not too terribly Pretty far close, far. yeah. Is Tara, I can't remember if she's older or younger than you. Two years younger than me. Two years younger. Okay. Well, anyways, before we get started in this episode, we, I want to catch up with these guys, more so for you guys, but ever, but just to remind you that we are partnering up with Muller Chokes, and a lot of people look from, listen to a lot of different episodes, because I know not everybody listens to everything, so I just wanted to remind you that we are partnered up with them, and if you guys want 10% off, you can put in the code MVM2024, so all caps, MVM2024, and you'll get... Uh, 10% off the chokes. So I know a lot already bought them last year and didn't get a discount. Sorry about that. But uh, that is an offer we have for you guys. And there's a link in the show notes. So really what I wanted to start out with is um, I want to start out basically just asking, I guess start with Thomas or both of you, whatever. What what have you guys been up to, man? Been up to, Bubba? Since tech season? Yeah. Uh, really just the last, I mean, you can. It's been, well, it's been a long time since I've been on the podcast. Like how long do you think? Dude, what like, what is the last thing you were on for? What were we talking it's about? It's been so long I don't even On the road. Know. It's probably been on the road during duck season. That's the last, I think. <clears throat> when we talked about Kuyu, that's probably the last one. Oh yeah. That probably was. So that was, was that was that coming home or leaving? I think that was coming home. We did a few going At to the, the beginning week, of the year, huh? This of the season, yeah. Yeah. Or this season, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it doesn't have to do with just hunting, but like I don't know, just what you've been up to Shoot. life in general. Yeah, it's been a while. So um, uh, mainly work. Um, I got a, I got an opportunity to basically work almost as much as I want. Sometimes I probably work a little too much, but besides work, um, after duck season, we pretty much, I kind of go back to trying to get in somewhat quote unquote shape. Um, so kind of get 
a little more interested in the gym, eating a little bit better, um, getting in some good exercise and workouts, and then spring starts coming up and uh, start going into softball, um, local leagues, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of um, tournaments. And so besides that, um, we're very active in church, so there's always something going on um, church-wise, whether it's actually church on Sundays or maybe some outreach programs or maybe just parties with um, our church family. Um, So that that takes up some stuff. And then apart from that... (laughs) Um, it's going to be a year in next month, I think. I think it's going to be a year next month that I bought, um, a different house and we moved and we moved out a little further from town and it's, um, been, it's been (laughs) a lot more, um, work just around the, Mm -hmm. I guess the house, just because there's a lot of stuff that we want to change and do and clean up and stuff like that. So next week, next month's a year. I believe so. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I believe it's. A I month can't believe that. Fast. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if that's like actually move-in date, mm-hmm. but it's yeah, it's for sure getting around this time. So we have done a lot. I've, I've done a lot basically since we've moved in, yeah. but. Um, Anyways, it's that's a long process. So that, there's always something to do around the house, and um, besides that, honestly, uh, trying to spend some time with family. Mm-hmm. That's that that's a full plate. Right yeah, there. yeah. I was gonna say that's pretty busy. So yeah, the last time you were on was two eighty four. Actually, I was just trying to find it, but we were talking about Kuyu. Just like a quick review. Okay. And that's been about four months. Gotcha. Not too bad. That's really not. That it's bad. probably been a lot longer for you, huh? Cause I'm looking here. I don't even know when the last time eight you, months. You think so? No, I don't know. Six easily, probably. I bet. Yeah, man, dude. Any during the season? Kind of sad. Mm-mm. Wow. A lot yeah. of people say you don't hunt anymore. You were just giving me a bunch of trash for acting like I don't want to go on some. Well, this trip we we're well, talking hey, about. I just yeah, I heard it through the grapevine that you are, you know, <laughs> basically just kind of. <laughs> I've been know. hearing a lot of to, stuff. I don't know what to call it, and I'm trying to stay like on the <laughs> on the low side of you know of getting your blood pressure up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, because we can't have podcasts with us three without someone arguing about something. Usually, me well, and it's Thomas. not arguing. I mean, I'm just kind of I'm really concerned about you know the state of mind. Uh, I know, dude. Two thirty three. The future of the huh? Two thirty three. I know. One it's been year. A long time. One year. I know At least that's what I'm time. saying. We were talking about that trip with Brother Hilton. Yeah. There's no way. 67 episodes. I feel like a bad friend. <laughs> hey. And well, you're, who, well, who's the bad friend? That's why I said I feel Well, like you know, I come over every time and I'm invited. <laughs> he does. So I don't He's know. Never, I don't he know. never even questions. I'm he faithful, never, you know? never complains. Wow. Like, never. That, like that Striper song, Faithfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I mean. Uh, Where's wow. Thomas? Uh, well, he's uh, well, something. But. Yeah. Yeah. But a whole year? So I gotta reach a whole year? I guess so. Well you said oh, that you said the episode gracious. number, but what was two thirty three. No, I, you said the number, but what was the date? It says a year. I don't know the exact Whoa. date. It just said a year. Wow. I know. Been a year since I've been in this room? I don't know. I think also I mean I've had a ton of guests. I, I think know. what it is I don't like <laughs> at the more of the beginning I was like not that whatever. Well, here's what I see it is. I mean he's kind of like upgraded was, the quality of uh guest you know so <laughs> <laughs> so we've been left in the dust so if you re- if you regress you know you gotta yeah. kind of be like yeah. you know so in other words <laughs> no he's you just you don't want to wear out your welcome that's all i, I can't man i'm gonna have to go look i cannot hardly believe it's been that long <laughs> let's see the exact date so yeah a year ago but youtube doesn't show like me, the actual time dates yeah, mm, yeah. this says it has oh, such low time. ratings he's like get <laughs> march 27th <laughs> march 27th dude that's almost exactly almost exactly here three days off wow well what do you i mean what have you been up to i guess for the last year <laughs> <laughs> let's see i mounted uh <laughs> i mounted birds. 60 birds <laughs> i killed 200 ducks <laughs> no i wish i killed 200 ducks yeah 
No, just working. You know, life. I mean, it's crazy how fast time goes by, and you know, your your kids get older and they start doing things, and they're not home as much. And you just, I was talking to somebody today, and I go, basically, as your kids get older, you think that it's going to get easier, but you're just your circumstances change, and you still stress out just as much about whatever, you know. So it just it's that transition, and then. Yeah, mountain birds working. Sur- survive duck season. When you're saying barely. transition, are you talking like uh, more or less kind of like letting well, not go? Kids. Not letting go, no. like, but basically y- you've they're not brought kids them to anymore, a point, right? and you kind of l- watching yeah. and waiting to see yeah, what well, they do. I mean, to what a point? what I what see is like about? you only got so much time with your kids, right? Yeah. And to instill whatever values you want to instill in them. And then at some point in time, no matter what you say, they're it's pretty much done. They're they're mm-hmm. they're molded into the person they're gonna be, right? And then you're just kind of like you find your I don't know if your influence is less, but what you say becomes less because you know mm-hmm. that they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so you realize that you know, that what you've instilled them, that's that's what they're gonna carry with them the rest of their life. And hopefully you've done done the right thing. Mm-hmm. So I mean I got great kids. I think I, I have some of the best kids that someone could have. Do they have their moments? Yeah, but I think every kid does. But um, I think what they reflect to the community or the people around them is is good, positive, mm-hmm. and um, and we still still deal with things at at home, right? Mm-hmm. Just family, mm-hmm. and we're super close. And sometimes I maybe I made the mistake of treating my kids too much like my friends and instead of being more authoritarian mm-hmm. in a sense, but I think they've turned out pretty good. So yeah. I'm not going to cry about it. I think so too. But yeah. So just watching, watching them transition and do different things, be more independent and then just work, man. Just mm-hmm. get into that routine of life. You know, mm-hmm. you work and shut the computer off and, do the family stuff, and then come back this morning, turn it back on, and you just get doesn't, into that that routine, right? Doesn't it feel like you you're hitting your pill quicker, quicker every day? Like you know what I mean? Like the day's gone, and you're oh. it's, you're laying down again. You're like, man, I can't <laughs> believe this. The day's over. Right? What what I do so much now is like, not so much lately, but I find myself taking naps in the middle of the day. Like mm-hmm. you know, for my 15 minute break in the afternoon, I'll set my alarm for 10 minutes. I'll lay down on the bed. I literally be dreaming. And then I'll wake back up and go back to work and finish off the day, man. It's like, am I getting old? You know, do I do do I require sleep? More sleep? I don't know. You know? But I guess the older you get, you have to get up three times in the night to go pee. I mean, you don't get that solid sleep, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the truth, but, dude. I don't I don't feel like I sleep that good anymore. And it's been like that for like two years now. Yeah. And like you saw, I mean, when I was younger, I could I could stay in bed sometimes till ten o'clock on Saturdays. Thank right? God I go to sleep quick. Within oh. ten seconds, I'm out. Yeah, that's how. Thank I, you, Lord. I, I, I hope fast, I never lose that. But about three o'clock, I'll wake up at night and I'll lay there. For, I dread that day. for like an hour, and just you got thoughts going through your head, and you're no. trying to shut them off. I hope I don't. Do you that. know, and um, try to shut them off, and you kind of go in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep. Then I, as you guys know, I dream like crazy. So I dream that I feel like I didn't sleep, and I wake up, you know. And so it seems so, lately, from about three o'clock to six thirty, it's kind of in and out of it, in and out of it. Mm. But. This That's is what it crazy. Is. I can't. I don't do naps really, but I can't. What about fall Sunday? Asleep. I don't fall asleep really fast. What about Sunday afternoon? I I don't. I, really? I don't as of now. Oh, that's National Sleep Day in our house, yeah. dude. If I ain't no, doing and, and something I'm, with church on Sunday night, you best believe I'm. I'm, I'm not. Up, now. I'm not opposed to it, but like I'll say, I can fall asleep quick at night. Yeah, but do you I wake don't know. up or you sleep all the way through the whole night? I, I sleep through. Oh, and may, and maybe, I love those days. Maybe so. that's why. I sleep through the whole night. It's just I feel I don't feel good in the mornings half the time. Half of it's because I know I'm clenching, like we talked about. Yeah, grinding my teeth. So when I wake up, my neck's killing me. Stuff hurts all the time. It's like very rare. Me and Jake were talking about this the other day. It's very rare I wake up and feel like oh, I feel good. Right? I feel amazing. <laughs> I feel like I could tear the world apart right now. No, I never. Feel I get like very anymore. rare, like once every three months. Something hurts somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that every morning you wake? You feel amazing no, every morning you wake no, up? Hun, no, hundred percent. No. It's like when's the last time you felt that way? Can you even think of that? 
Was no. it? Did you feel that way when you were twenty? Like I don't, I don't even remember know if I that did in my thirties. <clears throat> I think forties when I started kind of like felt changes, you know, like mm-hmm. weird changes. Like you didn't Here's heal as fast. Though. You don't Here's recover as fast. You don't sleep as good. I, I think Whatever. this has a part to play. I, I know. I know you've talked about a lot of times being woke up in the middle of the night from your family, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You worked a basically rotating shift, mm-hmm. rotating schedule for how many years? Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty much n- semi kind of like that. Not really, but like for one week every five weeks. So basically I have one week where like, yeah, I could be called anytime, but then I have four weeks where it's like normal. So I think like I get, I get pretty comfortable and all that. And then I get kind it's of disrupted up. and then I go back. And so it's not too, too bad. But, I mean, mix that in with just being active and, I mean, you're always, something could always happen, you know? I didn't Mm -hmm. really want to follow up with him with, like, he says, like, oh, duck season's over. I started working out and health conscious. I'm like. Oh, you didn't want to come in after that? that. Softball, yeah, but (laughs) doing all that extra stuff. (laughs) (laughs) It's fun, dude. I I, I enjoy it. Now, what I have done, though, is I got to sit stand, right? And, I, and actually, after four years, my wife is so happy because I've transitioned from our bedroom, <laughs> working in there, to the garage, right? Got a quiet cool in there. So what I've done is I've taken some... some. You got a split unit in there. Yeah. So I, I Can took, you believe he finally did it? After some, how many years? I took some dumbbells and I put them in there. So when I get you know, we got those breaks we got to take, yeah. I'll just start doing like curls or well, shoulder stuff or whatever, just really? to kind of loosen up the muscles, you know, a little bit. Like nothing serious. Mm-hmm. Just to get a little flexibility. <clears throat> Yeah, it's amazing how many joints can pop. <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> when you haven't used them that yeah, like that for a while, Trav. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. <laughs> what about you? I guess you've been on the podcast, so you don't yeah. really need to say. Um, they hear me all the time. Yeah, I try to let you guys do the talking more now since you're not on here as much. But <clears throat> I want to start no. shooting my bow again. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, we could just do like a really brief overview of the the season since we haven't talked. Yeah, I had that in there, that. like reflection, like kind of reflection of the twenty three twenty four season. Mm-hmm. Well, I you think know? this, is, I think it was probably one of the most anticipated seasons I ever had because we had so much water, and I was just thinking, with this much water, we all were. The grass is going to grow. There's going to be more mm-hmm. bugs, right? The hatch is going to be insanity, and then we're going to have just this season that I never could have imagined. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I went out opening day, and if I would have played it right, I could have shot a limit of mallards. I think so easy wasn't funny. And I've never seen that many mallards at all. Or in the place that I hunted, I've never mm-hmm. didn't even seen mallards there before. Mm-hmm. And so the, the opener, opener was, I was like, okay, it's on. And from then on, it just seemed like, it never didn't get better from it, there. It, what was in my mind was going to happen didn't never came to fruition. It just it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems like everybody we talked to had the same mm-hmm. thing. I it mean, was weird, for, through the whole state. My dad talked to some guy. He he goes to a state sales and he was talking to some guy that has a duck club, and he said they shot more ducks this year than they've ever shot before. It was a phenomenal season. They averaged uh, like a five or six bird limit the whole season. I was like, whoa. And then there's another guy. I just seen him. I hadn't seen him in 20 years, but he hunts a lot um, here locally. Has a boat. Talking about, uh, what's his name? What's his first name? Israel. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and he said they had, he said he had, probably had the best season he ever had. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, okay. There's so much that you could be asked about that, though. Because, yeah. like, I was gonna, for, for one, for one, are they public or private? And for two, they're public, how, how many? but they have a boat so they can access places during okay, so, the week that, that you would consider, you know, that most people are not going to access. So they're they're public with a boat. Yeah. How many seasons have they hunted? He's probably hunted. Oh. For a long time? Yeah. Okay. 20, well, 30 shoot, years. I got to give that to him then. <laughs> okay, yeah. but let me ask. Go ahead. Because I was going to say, I mean, one thing you could say is if it mm-hmm. is uh, private, um, because the the lack of migration, in other words, if you got the best food around, the local birds, then the yeah, local the local birds, birds are going to be there. That's not surprising. For two, it could have been a local or a, a guy that maybe only has a couple years, 
And maybe he just went more this year, and this is the best season he's ever had. You know what I mean? That's kind of no, – This guy's pretty but if, experienced. But if this is what you said, yeah, then, wow, he yeah. he did a good job then. So, yeah. He did a great job. What what I was thinking earlier, like yesterday or early this morning, I knew we were going to have this podcast, where we hunt, you can see a long ways, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have this – you don't have, like, rolling hills or mm-hmm. this crazy topography where you can't see a long ways. Mm-hmm. And you know you're hunting, you're hunting the spot, and you can see what two three miles, yeah, probably. And and there's no birds. Direction. There's no birds yeah. up up above you, or even way out there, and you don't hear shooting. Yeah, you're not two hundred yards off the the X. You're there's just nothing. There's nothing. There is no X. In other words, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. There's no birds. Right. One thing I did want to say though, I I've, I have talked about this on here is like I refuse to say it was a bad season because. I think of how much I hunted, which wasn't as much as I usually do, and I think about timing of things. Like some hunts, me and you went on earlier in the year, dude. It was always one step behind. I felt like right, like we were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Timing's everything, right? In a lot of ways, that's just a couple scenarios. But what I, the reason I was gonna say I refuse to say it was a bad season, I just say it's a it was a weird season in my opinion, because you had all these high hopes. You know when someone tells you about a good restaurant and they go on and on and on and on and on about it, has it ever been as good as they say it is? Most of the time it's not because you created this thing in your head that you were just going to be mind blown. And then you get there and you're like, oh, I was good, but it wasn't the best. But when you find it, it's so good, right? So like I know of a lot of people that did really good this year, better than they did. So the reason I I learned something last year because I, I had the year of my life. I don't know if I'll have a year like that again. And I heard so many people saying how bad that year was. And I was like, how was this? Now, last year was a crazy year. I, I really don't know how people were saying they had a bad year. Bad. But just to be fair and like not know where people hunt and their situations, different areas, different environments, I'm like, man, it's just you just can't. I just don't like to say it's not a good year because now I have such a broader um, scope of people that I get feedback from, from all over the state and the West coast and everywhere. Right. That I'm like, you know, just cause it wasn't mind blowing for me and I wasn't the field a lot less days. Um, I don't want to say it was a bad year because when I've said it was an amazing year, people have told me it was a bad year, but I think there was, I mean, from what I seen, I think there was less birds and I think in our area, an, an indicator of that is the junior hunt and the veteran hunt that, that you went on. I'm saying right. just the amount of birds that were transitioning. No, I agree in these with you on that. I, I agree guess. with you on that, but that's what I'm saying exactly in this area. Yeah. Because where these other guys are, it's a totally different area. And birds always are transitioning yeah. and moving every year. Exactly. They're, they're not always just going to be there, right. you know? So it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't do this, but if you really wanted to compare, I mean, you could always look up. I think Cal Waterfowl does it. Mm-hmm. Somebody does it. Report, you know, bird yeah. harvest reports. And compare years. Yeah. You know, that would be, that would actually be really interesting. I wish we had that. Well, they they do. Refuge or wherever. They do do that. Do do. But I did, I did a podcast on that for the last season, but we won't get that info, I think, till right before this next one. This next season, right. But yeah, it is going to be interesting to look at that because I think they do three or five years or something on there by refuge. Right. All, all the main refuges. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say I had a, I had a bad year, really, because I mean, the, I didn't really keep my average, but like I never, there was maybe only once or twice where I went out and I think I shot a bird or, you know what I mean? Like, let's just put it this way. I didn't put very much effort in Mm -hmm. and I shot an adequate amount of birds, I guess. Like I wasn't killing myself for no birds like I had done in last years before. Right. I I think, but that's become with wisdom of learning, right? Me and you both went out to the refuge twice yeah. last year. We scouted, walked around, and we left. Yeah. One thing I did notice that this year that seemed to be like a change, because I had transitioned so much to hunting in the afternoons, mm-hmm. people were doing better in the mornings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't hunt a lot of mornings because mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with mm-hmm. crowds. the crowds and that mm-hmm. whole scenario. So I went in the afternoon, and, it, and there wasn't the afternoon flight like mm-hmm. I had seen in years past. So yeah. I, th- mm-hmm. I think... Birds adapt, right? They that being said, whatever, why, why do you think that was? I think the biggest part, look at our weather. 
We we yeah. How many North Wind days did we have, dude? <coughs> Minimal. Uh, not, not that Minimal. many. Minimal. Like I I can think of it so many days of South Winds. It was insane. Yeah, and there was South places winds. that I hunted where you Just could hear birds. South you wind. could hear birds, right? Mm-hmm. In the closed zones, but they weren't they weren't transitioning. They were just loafing. Yeah. So, and it wasn't cold. It wasn't, you know, really no weather to speak of. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't disagreeing. I think we're all on the same page. We're not saying it was a bad year. We're just not saying we're just saying it was a different year. It was a weird year. Things you anticipated and expected didn't happen. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it was an amazing year. Personally, it was one of my worst years ever. Well, person number wise, personally, just the amount of birds I've seen and, and yeah, but I I mean I've seen some amazing things. But how I many mean, areas did you hunt? Uh, you know what I mean, three or four, right? Yeah. But I did see some some things this season that I'd never seen before, which was mm-hmm. was was amazing. You know, yeah. Um, like I told you that mm-hmm. one time I was hunting and there was a pond. It was a they call it a upland pond, not a stitch of tulies on the whole pond. And I literally was in a t- clump of tulies about as big as this table right here, and I had probably two or three hundred pintails in one flock, like strafe me like twenty yards high, like six times. Mm-hmm. Not already shot a pintail, but I mean, literally you could feel the wind from them. And it just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> and they just went down That's cool. like two hundred yards, came back. It was just yeah. like, oh my goodness. Yeah, and um, that's pretty cool. Then I had another flock, probably of a hundred, do the same thing. That's crazy. It was just insane. I will say something that happened to me. I I went on a hunt and I seen more cinnamons than I've ever seen ever, huh? Ever in one day or anywhere for that matter. Uh, that me, Talon, and Barney. Okay, and Shane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I I think I seen. I don't know. A <laughs> hundred. Like, what was like, the biggest flock you seen not, of cinnamon? Not exaggerating. I think I seen probably a hundred for the for the day. That's a lot mm. of cinnamon on one day. They were normally small. Like I don't know. Probably the biggest flock I seen was maybe ten. That's like a decent sized flock. Of you know what's funny? Right? We didn't do nothing like you guys did, right? Because we had fog when we went, and we. But I bet you, I still seen like a, once that fog clear. I bet you, I still seen a hundred plus cinnamons. That one day and that one you and I flock. went. Remember that day you and I went? I had a flock a of 20. Mm. I, I've never seen nothing like that. Yeah. A flock of 20 cinnamons come right in. Mm-hmm. Remember the day we hunted? Early season, you and I? Yes. We seen. Yeah. We could have probably I know, shot that. a bunch of cinnamons, but we were holding off thinking that the mallards so were going to come in dude. and we were just letting cinnamons go You never us. pass the cinnamon, dude. Why do you do that? You don't ever pass we the cinnamon. We talked about that later. I was so mad at myself ever. for that. You don't I, ever pass the cinnamon. I don't know why we did that. Honest to God, Thomas. I've never shot too many cinnamons. Either. I know, and I don't, and I don't think I'm above that, right? Neither one of us do. I love cinnamons. They're they're, they're exactly because people listen to us thinking, "Oh, you're stupid." And I, I mean, like kind of looking back now, second, second favorite bird, probably. We kind yeah. of are stupid, but at the same time, because the saying says, "What two in or one in the hands better I'm, than two in the bush." Bird in the hands and better than two in the bush. That's yeah. exactly what we were thinking. We're thinking, I want a limit of green, because from the scouting and everything, we yeah. thought it was going to be absolutely stupid. And I don't know. I still don't know why it wasn't. Honestly, it doesn't make any sense. But well, remember that we were a little bit off of, we were pawned off the X. But I didn't even like. Whoa, well, yeah. those guys were getting birds, but they were they were shooting them at seventy yards, shooting high. really high. And we even, and I've never seen you do that, dude. I have never seen you agree with me about leaving like we did. I'm like, dude, we're wasting our time. And you're like, yep, I'm ready. I was like, and you never do that. You always just want to sweat it out. But yeah, we it were, was pointless, dude. We watched yeah, it for two hours. Yeah. Birds wanting to come, they're coming in, they're coming in. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, yeah. Okay. I think, well, there was multiple people on that spot, you know, different groups. And I think one of them, you know. If it wasn't one group shooting, it was the other. Well, no, I mean, yeah. nobody was one to let them work, right? Yeah. And it's always these like, because if everybody would hold off, the birds, obviously, they wanted that pond. They wouldn't even have to call and they, they still wanted that pond. But, mm-hmm. you know, people get impatient, like, oh, I don't want them to shoot, so I'm going to shoot. Mm hmm. So yeah, uh, how many times have we seen that in good mallard spots? You know, you're sitting there watching, and you're like, "Oh, here they come!" And then someone just shoots shoots at them seventy, ninety, hundred yeah. yards high, and you're well, just like, "Have you ever seen those days two, two where people are shooting all around you, right? But the birds for some reason want this particular spot, mm-hmm. and they're kind of oblivious to the shooting. They just they want to drop in there until people actually shoot at them, yeah. and then they mm-hmm. they take off." Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say I had too many like lights out days. Um, I had a solo hunt on a public refuge. Um, that I kind of I I kind of regret doing what I did because I ended up shooting six spoonies and a and a mallard, Drake mallard. But I could have did a limit of Drake spoons. But the that mallard, I think that was the first bird I had shot. Mm. So of course I'm you ain't passing shoot. that up. No, man. but then literally the only other thing I had seen them for the rest of the day. Actually, no, I missed a pintail, but. I ended up shooting um, six Jake Shellers and uh, and a uh, mallard, but that was actually a really really fun hunt. Just because all those birds, I I made a little move or like adjustment, and I promise you, I was shooting those birds like five yards. It was like so fun. I think I doubled twice. It was it was awesome. That I'm was trying a fun to remember. Hunt. I mean, obviously, you gotta be careful to say, but I'm just like trying to wonder what. That one is. I don't remember that. That was one. on a Sunday too, but that was like uh-huh. the one day we had like a twenty mile an hour north wind. Mm. I remember there was one Sunday it was super windy, and it it still wasn't that great. Oh, I know what you're talking like, about. Like there wasn't yeah. there wasn't like a <clears throat> lot of birds, but like the it wind trickled. The wind was strong enough. I guess some birds just wanted to get up. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, I had that. We had a couple other, you know, enjoy. I mean, but more. More of our my hunts this year was kind of a little more relaxed and enjoyable. Just kind of, yeah. How'd you like those uh, those new things you got? Was that the first season you used those? Wasn't it? What those decoys that? Oh, the flashback twos. The um, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I like them a lot. Mm-hmm. Did you guys use them up north or where? Did, did you see? No. Did you see a big? You can't. Oh, you can't. Mm-mm. Okay, didn't know that. Legally, no. I just. I mean, yeah. I used them several times when we were hunting out of the boat or on a refuge, and they're awesome. Yeah, I really like those. Um, the flashbacks are awesome. I actually got to send that one in and get it. Get it. Uh, I don't know what he's got to do. Probably just needs to be a little, little tweaking or something. I need to talk to that guy actually. Why am I drawing a blank on what the brand is? Uh, Duck Creek. Mm-hmm. Duck Creek? Yeah. Yeah, Duck Creek. Yep. Decoys. Why does that not sound right? Anyways. Um, yeah, I mean, we could go on and on about the season. I mean, because it's just different. But, you know, for me, it was like I got, a, you know, the new job, like in the, I would say the, the normal best part of the season which wasn't really the best part of the season for us but it was fine i was my personally was totally fine it was like a good year for me i was telling someone this other day it was like a good year for me to not be at its best Mm -hmm. for me if this if that had happened last year you'd be losing your mind dude (laughs) i'd be breaking rules son (laughs) i'm really i really like this job a lot thankful for it it was an answer to prayer and and in the long run, it's going to be so much better in so many ways. And duck season's – duck season too, but that's not the priority, right? I mean, life and family yeah. and church and everything else is the priority. But, yeah, so. I've, so what's going on with the, your mode of duck transportation? My mode of duck transport? Oh, the boat situation? That, yeah, this we is the first year of using that one too. That boat. Yeah, we haven't even – oh, you mean the, the Pro, Pro Drive, Drive 40? Yeah, I guess that was, huh? Man, we yeah. we never really talked about that much, huh? Mm-mm. Did we talk about it at all? Well, I haven't been here since we talked about <laughs> who used so no. Well, we were using it. That's We had the boat with us. Yeah, we had but to I have talked about it. I don't it. know if we'd really used it much, though. Hmm. Or did a podcast about it, at least, because we wanted to use it for the season first, I think. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I hadn't got your... I, thought, I feel like we kind of talked about it when we were talking about the trip, but I don't think maybe we have... What do you, I mean, what's your thoughts on it? Because everybody, I think everybody knows we're getting a 50 horse, the uh, Tahatsu. Hopefully that comes in. We, things been getting pushed a little bit, just timing and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, you know, we were, me and Tom, at first we didn't care. We're like, ah, whenever we get, as long as it's for duck season of 24, 25 season. Now we're like, man, 
be fun to get that early and we can go run the rivers, go out to the lake, take the family out, do some stuff because the power's there, you know. But it's getting pushed off a little bit later. It'll still be before season, but anyways, I mean, what was your thoughts on the 40? Now, let me preface something before you say anything. Um, I, a lot of people, I think I made, mentioned this, I thought when we were got, we both thought that we were getting the one with the instant reverse, but we weren't. So we were a little bit bummed at first <laughs> when we got it and realized. Because mm-hmm. I say this, it's always, it's like having four-wheel drive. Or not four-wheel drive, a reverse camera. It's like having a reverse camera. Like for years, there's never been such a thing. They started putting those in trucks. And then like my truck, I had, that was the first time I ever had one. And when I got used to it, it's like, I don't really want to go with that one. Can I go with that one? 100%. I can still drive. I can still back out of a parking lot. But it's nice just having that extra, the convenience, of, the it. convenience of it. And that's exactly what it, to me, is like having instant reverse. It's just super convenient. In and out of the dock, um, picking decoys up, just moving maybe in and out spots for blinds, whatever. But, I mean, in the general, what what was your thoughts of that, the 40 horse? Um, drive? Yeah. I mean, no, I, I liked it. We, we went a foot longer and what, six inches narrower. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't really make as big of a difference as, I don't know, I guess I was thinking. I don't mm-hmm. know. It it didn't affect it too too much. I, I think the side-to-side moved a little bit. But anyways, I th- we're going to go back with to a 54. Um, but again, between the two, I don't think it's really a life or death thing. The motor itself... Um, never had an issue, like you said, except for it, it is nice to have that instant reverse just because like you said, you don't need it, but there's a lot of times where you want it Mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily want to take the time to spin the, the lower unit all the way around to backup. I totally understand why they have full power reverse and I think it's a great idea and I love it. I love having it, but, um, us personally mm-hmm. use it less <clears throat> than we would use an instant. Mm-hmm. Um, Way more. Just because of where we hunt, um, we're you know what I mean. We we're, we don't we're not going through like a ton of hyacin or a bunch of a junk as much in shallower water like those guys or mud or whatever mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But that being said, it has come in handy. Um, but. Other than that, I thought it performed well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple little nitpicky things that I could say. Like again, it's not life or death. How about the, how about them uh, poles, man? The spud poles. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, those are great. Love those things. Those were. Huh, we should have done that from the beginning. Awesome. Yeah, spud poles were great. Um, it was a lot nicer having that gun box. Um, that we had in this boat than the last one. Mm-hmm. The last one yeah, basically yeah. was not a box worthless. at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, it not held, worthless. It held stuff. That's pretty bad. Worthless is pretty bad, but it wasn't very. It just didn't do what we thought it was going to do. Right. So, in other words, like on this one, we have a pod that's basically just a box that you sit on to drive, and then you have a actual, you know, bench box, and basically all the guns and. Some other little things went in there, and then there's there's just there's always more things than you think about originally. You know, you're mm-hmm. thinking, oh, blind bag and a gun and decoys. Well, there's a lot more that you always have in the boat than that. So having more stuff off the floor and like in a designated spot that's not going to get wet and muddy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the last one basically served as a lot of. A lot of that. Like, the guns didn't fit. You weren't going to get any gear in there. It was basically small little items, you know, and that was the bench that we sat on. But So I thought there was more storage in this one. Mm-hmm. And, For sure. And uh, Step not, out of the way, not clutter in the boat, you know? like Never cluttered. Even though it was narrower, I never felt like the boat was cluttered. Mm-hmm. And don't have to have an extra seat in there and all that because of the bench. Uh, I, I liked it. I no complaints. The one minor thing that I would suggest as a change is I will say this. 
I like the twist style handle for mm-hmm. the throttle. Yeah. But I do not like they have um and it would be an easy fix. And had we not sold it, I probably would have done it. They have a foam on the handle itself and the foam is around a metal shaft that's the twist throttle. Well, that can slip at times. So it causes you like on a, it don't matter on a short ride, but like on a long ride, it's it it like causes a lot more hand fatigue than if mm-hmm. it was like a grippy handle. Mm-hmm. Like a one piece thing that was grippy. And you know, sometimes it's five degrees and you got gloves on and yeah. you're trying to figure out if this thing is slipping or not or whatever. And we found out that was happening too. It ended up over time started slipping. Mm-hmm. And we're like, man, am I really and then you're death gripping even harder thinking yeah. it's your grip, but it's not. It's right. just slipping. Right. Inside of that. Yeah. Inside of it, yeah. So um that's something that I'm excited to not have happen on this next boat um, because the handle's mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I am really excited about that. But like dude, I said, and the quietness, my goodness. Oh, I'm I'm pumped about that, dude. Like the sound and just the the speed, mm-hmm. sound speed, and then being able to conversate and like, hey, where's the dude? When we were running, mm-hmm. you were telling me something I couldn't hear what tell yeah. what you were saying to me. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, yeah, you have to let off the throttle. What? And it's not like you're going crazy fast anyways when you're loaded down for season. Hey, yeah. this I don't know why I just thought of this, but I talk still talking about the season, kind of going back to that a little bit. There was a couple times that <laughs> was pretty fun uh, getting to the hole, you know, before everyone else in the boat. Um, and fog is always an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know depending on where you're at, uh, you don't have much room for play <laughs> side to side. Dude, running, running, no lights in the moonlight is <laughs> Epic. something to be said yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Trouse would love that. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, he'd be pucker <laughs> like a stinking... <laughs> like, a, like a California raisin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> it's a trip, man. A boat, boat, a boat, a duck boat is just awesome. It's just, it makes the whole trip, even if there's not the, the ducks there, it makes the experience more. Like, because walking out there, whatever, I guess it has its part, you know, hiking in or walking in, but you're just hiking and walking in, so it's like, whatever, you're not, you know. But, like, ripping in to the spot, and you're just sitting there, and you're dodging things, driving, especially when you're driving. You know, it's like, it's 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 just a, it's fun, dude. And then coming it's out, like your boat racing. We've come out a few times, and we only caught one duck. But coming out was like, man, dude, just the sun's out. You're getting a little bit warmer, and you're just, it's like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. You know. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's less effort. It's not necessarily less effort. I don't want to say that, but like, if you if you some people don't walk very far to hunt. Like mm-hmm. some people walk a hundred yards, you know, and they're like, "Oh, you got to walk in." Well, some people walk two miles in, and we have been those people. Like, if you walk two miles in, hunt all day, walk two miles out, don't shoot a bird, you're wasted. You're like. Why am I doing this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You do that in a boat, and it's like, yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> as soon as that motor starts, yeah, you're, it kind of just doesn't feel as bad. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I 100% agree with that. The internal, I don't know what you felt about the internal lights. I love them. Oh, yeah. We question if we we like, oh, no, if we'll like these or if they're a waste of time. No. I would not want to go without them again. The rooster lights... You could live without driving, because I did like them to see the tail, the rooster tail, and to be able to kind of set where you want to be on plane. But I will, I will admit this: is having them for backing into the launch was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like that was to me more important for that reason than than for like driving at night. Mm-hmm. Jake, would, Jake was complaining when he was behind us that he couldn't see nothing, which I thought, oh, that's kind of good to know. Someone's trying to beat us; yeah. and they can't see. You know, <laughs> crack those boys on and <laughs> blind them. <laughs> yeah. But I guess we can we can talk more about the new one later on a different one or something down the road. But hopefully we get that other one 
July, August, I hope. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Maybe I hope before then, honestly. Yeah. What thing when I wanna say about KP real quick, KB promised he's the one of the owners of Pro Drives. His brother's the one that's designed a lot of stuff and done everything. But um man, that guy, he they're such good people. Their customer service is amazing. I've had stuff in the past with other people. It's just like, man, I don't like working with people and they have attitudes or I don't know. They just they're super friendly. KP is like over under KP under promises big time. Like it's nice working with people like that. I can't stand when they're promising you everything. Oh, I'm sorry. And they just keep doing that. It's like, I mean, whatever things happen, you totally get it. But like when that's a constant business character, that's not a good thing, I think. But having someone that under promises and then delivers sooner, you know, than they said they would, that's nice. That's super nice. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, man, I want to be more like that. Right. Like kind of, Make the bar like you know set these times and constraints. We try. I think I know I do. Like I'm. A, let's do this at this time. And you try to push the envelope and get. It's like that doesn't really benefit anybody doing that. You know. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> probably keep yourself safe and a lot, lot less trouble. Man, I was gonna talk about. Oh, so let's let's uh, finish up. And this may take five minutes or fifteen minutes. That's okay either way. But um, let's finish up with like. This last conversation. <laughs> we got some plans. I don't even know if I mentioned it to you guys on here, but we, uh, Jamie Muller's really wanting us to come out there and uh, go hunting. And um, he got me really fired up the other day. He's he's there in Connecticut, and they have a lot of sea ducks. They have black ducks, which is making me, my mouth drool thinking about that. I've been wanting to shoot a black duck for a long time, especially a fat, plump, plumed out one in like December coming from Nova Scotia. That's <laughs> what he said. He was really throwing all those words in, and I was like, "Man!" And I, Travis, you didn't say nothing to this. You probably thought it was crazy, but like to me, beauty's in the eye that we hold her. If you haven't shot something yet, it's more precious to you, right? Like technically, I don't care about mergansers, but shooting a red-breasted merganser to me would be really awesome because we're not going to just go shoot those, right? So if I'm trying to get all the birds, right, I definitely if when I go back there, I want to get one of those for sure, and they are pretty cool looking. But uh, there was some, I think he said eider too. I thought he said common eider. And then he go. He told me all the old squaw you want and this and that. So there's a few of those you haven't shot either. So. Yeah, I haven't shot squaws. So anyways. Long tails. The, yeah, oh no, I'm, I'm, st <laughs> I'm sticking with old squaws, man. I don't care what people say. I'm not going to live in this soft no, mindset. But anyways, squaw. I know you don't either. I'm just teasing. So I walked in and I'm. Thomas and Tom, uh, Travis are going a little bit. There's a little bit of harassment going on. Tom, Travis said Thomas isn't thinking clearly because he's debating on whether he's going to go on this trip because we're going to try to go in December to hunt with Jimmy Muller. I'm not trying. I am. Travis said he is. Well, the thing is, is like <laughs> Thomas, happened? are you? Did you tell him you weren't going? <laughs> no, you didn't he's, say nothing. He's yet. literally delusional. I don't know where he's coming up with this well, stuff. Well, all I know is I heard from some source. I didn't, hey, look, wait, hold on a second. We, don't cause animosity with I'm the not brothers. Causing, I did not. Potentially I said that that it was that, that it was. I don't want him thinking. I said something. I said he said he don't know. Questionable. Which I said that's why I said questionable. Right. I'm surprised that you're just like jumping on board. No. I'm not. Not for what a black duck and stuff. I think that's why. Questionable. You know what I'm saying? Because what happened before, right? We could have shot, potentially shot a Harlequin, and then now you can't shoot a Harlequin, or we could have shot a Harlequin. I know. And that makes me sick. totally gone, and I'm going to have to go all the way we to Alaska that. someday to do that, dude. right? So Blew it, dude. That and was... then life happens, right? You don't know what's going to happen, but so yep. there's no rewind buttons. Yeah. So when you get the opportunity... And you can make it happen. You find a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 my. To be approach. honest with you, the the opportunity and the cost is nothing like it really could be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it'd be well, a very. Ever since I seen my first mounted black duck in person, I was like, okay, that's a cool bird. And maybe because I they're not here, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, for but sure. But they look cool to me. You know, all ducks are beautiful. But when I seen that one mounted, I was like, "Oh, I gotta have one of those someday." And they're they're substantially bigger bigger than mallards, huh? The one I seen was a big bird. Yeah, because I've seen them held on videos up to each other, and I'm like, "Whoa, yeah, it's big difference." And just they just have this beauty about them. So you're thinking? So you're calling Thomas out or what? 
No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to encourage him to to think clearly. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Only Travis would come up with such a nice approach. <laughs> oh my word! Well, what is what is the holdback, Thomas? <clears throat> There's not necessarily a holdback. Or I never, the question. I never said anything that I wasn't going to go. I just said that. <laughs> Don't beat around the bush. Come on, just. Just what? tell the truth. What the truth is, the truth is, <laughs> you can't see I, all by myself. No, here's the deal. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> oh, but, oh, strong that, words. That is the truth. That is the strong truth. Strong words. <laughs> yeah, okay, look at everybody. Can, oh, everybody can, can do what they want, but not everybody's willing to suffer the consequences. <laughs> <of doing that. laughs> That's the truth. It is the truth. Actually. <laughs> That's the truth. Oh my goodness. What, what's your dad say? Hold on. What does your hey, dad say? Hold up. Let's your, wait. Your let dad me ask you something. Put your said, mic back by your mouth. Your dad always your said you're free to choose. You're Charles, let me ask you something first, though. Your choice. You're, talking, you're not talking tough, I'm going to say, but let me ask you something. Have no. you mentioned this to Tamara yet? The first thing she said when I said, I'm okay. going to Connecticut, she goes, we talked about going. I want to go. You're going to go eat seafood without me. That's what she told me. <laughs> if I okay. have to, I'll go and eat seafood without her. And I'll say this. Sarah said the same thing. Let me ask you this. Why don't you want to take your wife? I do want to take my wife. Then why don't you? But the thing is, I think it's best, right, to have the, the most, the oh. best experience you can have, I guess, without adding adjectives to it. We can go. We can we can hunt. We can scout it out. We can find all the good places to eat, eliminate the ones that are bad. Because you know what it is? If you take your wife someplace and she's been anticipating this and she's like, oh, that was that was gross. Why we go here? Right, then that's a ruined opportunity. But if you can make it the best trip ever for them because you're eating at all the best restaurants, it, it, we've already pre scouted. It's like pre scouting. Here's the deal, though. That's to me doesn't count because you have a guy that lives there. So you already have a local guy. He can point you into all the right directions and all that stuff. If, <laughs> if this is what you say it is, I'm not understanding why you can't take. Maybe one more day or something to do, you know, another special well, of course special we activity that. or something. Of course. Because, I would be happy to do that. Because not every single one of these, you're talking about three hunt days. Not every single one of these days are going to have to be morning and afternoon days. I, I just, for sure, there's no way. Well, if you want to stay home, you're more than welcome to. This has nothing to do with I mean, staying I'm not, home. I'm not saying home. I'm saying if you're like hunting, right, saying, and, you, and you don't want to hunt the afternoon or whatever, I'm just saying if, if, if it happens in the morning and you got to go back in the afternoon, and if you don't want to go, then you can stay and, and me and him will go. <laughs> oh, I'm no. not, I don't think, I don't think <laughs> it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be morning know. and night either. I just think, the, I don't know. I'm thinking of what's going to be taking place, and I just know there's not going to be much time for the wife. Will she, if there's two other women there beside her, then maybe she won't care. And that's not a bad idea. I just don't want to be thinking while I'm out there hunting, it's 10 o'clock, uh, we got to wrap this up in two hours when birds are flying and birds are coming in that we're not, we've never well, seen before. I guess if, I got to hurry and get back to Sarah. If, cause, if they want to go there, then there should be no reason for us to have to babysit them. Really? If you, uh, No, no. I know what you're thinking, I, but, but I know what you're thinking. What am I thinking? You're thinking that I would feel like I need a baby. Hundred percent. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> that is not. Or true. Or your wife is going to feel that way. No. You, why are you not coming back here? They have to come there with the full exception that no. they might not see me for three days. And and honestly, I don't think that's an issue. Probably not. If there's two other women there. No. If they were by your, if only Sarah went, she would probably be like, "Yeah, I don't. Why am I here by myself?" Or Darren. Here's the thing with me, and I'm okay with that because we haven't really did a big trip. Um, quite a while, so I'm okay with that. Doing that, I just know it's going to cost me three times as much to do that. Whereas I'm going, we're staying with him, we're going out with him. You know, basically say to take care of us. I mean, we got to pay for food and a plane ticket, but now you're playing for two plane tickets. You're playing for a hotel. You're playing for two people's food. It's mm -hmm. kind of like that. That kind of jumps a lot, but at the same time, it would be cool if they went. I think that'd be an awesome trip. Mm -hmm. Especially if we like, hey, you ain't gonna see us much for three days. On the fourth day, we're gonna spend all day and go whatever. That would be f that would be. A blast, I'm okay with dude. that. That'd be a lot of fun. That's and like, I think you'd be well. You're yeah. down doing that. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I'll do that. It's I don't probably care. Probably a once, once in a probably lifetime. Probably not gonna happen again. But to to be honest, 
No, no, I'm not saying. Well, uh, what I'm saying you is mean together. Uh, together. The, no, that would be an awesome trip. I mean, it's probably not a once in a lifetime with this right here. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm okay because I mean we'll just say Sarah. Sorry, I knew Sarah was going to want to go. At, I knew Tamara. Like they like that. But here's, well, here's the deal. It's it, beautiful. It, back there. They want to experience that. It's this set right here, and if this isn't what you're going to like, then just don't go. Yeah, true. And they can talk about it with each other. You know, it's not. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know what you guys. Whatever, I can tell you right now, though. But she was like, happens, she's like, I don't care if it's just me. You're not going without me. I'm going. So that tells me I don't. My need wife wasn't that adamant, but I'm. My wife would. I would. Yeah, the, the, she says. The that. only I don't thing know my she wife really says, thinks that. She's like, when you get there, there ain't no way, dude. My wife just said she goes. I don't, don't want to get dude. on an airplane. She goes. I don't want to get an airplane. Well, that's a long ways to walk. But <laughs> if you can get on the airplane, Sarah don't either. Sarah hates airplanes. If but you, if you can get on an airplane and make it there, then. When she's I, there, I think she'll I'm have glad we're talking about this right now because if this is the case, I do definitely got to start preparing for this whole well, yeah, me too. financial, <laughs> you know. But I, I really would love that. I think it would be a blast. And it make me feel – I think it does make you feel better if they're out having fun doing something too so yeah. you don't feel as bad when they're back home. Yeah. So, yeah, make it a six-day trip. That's, that's nothing. That's not hard to do. You guys are loaded down with vacation time. By then, I'll have enough. loaded down. Yeah, <laughs> not like this guy. Thomas won't comment. He, he's oh, a long timer. Yeah. yeah, right. He sucked it down when he was yeah. out cutting last year. Yeah. No, I mean, I guess we need to tell our wives to talk about it. I guess yours is going either well. I don't know. So if Darren goes by herself, is are you still gonna know. go? That's what she acts like. Yeah, I'll go. I never said I wouldn't go. Okay, so I I'm gonna talk to him now. Oh man, I guess that changes a lot of things. Now I got to figure out if they're gonna go. Well, I got to make sure my wife's gonna go. I, she, I I know she would. Once she was there, she if would you love, offer the opportunity, she would love every minute of it. Right? If if when she gets there. Oh yeah, Sarah don't like to fly either, but I guarantee you she'll get on a plane to go there. <clears throat> Especially if she knows Darren. Darian Darian literally loves everything about traveling. She likes a rental car better than our own car. I get literally, <laughs> it's annoying, dude. <laughs> I just she loves the, the airport. I just hope. I guess I hope I don't. I, don't I always wanted I to do an East Coast trip somewhere, Maine or Connecticut or somewhere on the. You know what I'm saying? Some. I just want to get the most out of coastal. it for that experience too, for the hunting side. And I just want. I just hope in my head, I'm like, because <sighs> I'll get that way. I'll be like, eh, I feel bad. We should probably go back or whatever. But I don't think it'll be a big deal. Why would it matter though? Because <clears> if it's explained, I, I wouldn't feel bad. Because if it's explained out, be like, hey. Dude, what if this, you're not getting back there till 8 o'clock at night? I'm just saying for what... I don't know fine. why. I'm not saying we'd hunt that all the time, but maybe we'll go to his facility where he's making the chokes. And I mean, I don't know. I, I don't just think it would be a big deal. Because, oh. but like I said, you just say, like, hey, this guy invited us. We're basically going to be with him, whatever his plan is. I mean, we might hunt all day or we might hunt the morning and he might want to go somewhere else after. You know what I mean? Like... Mm. I don't think it'd be a big deal. I don't think our wives would really miss us throughout the day. Probably not. I, I doubt it. They're on their own and figuring stuff out to do though. Cause yeah, I ain't gonna. Well, Darian don't have no problem. There. She's good at that. Oh, she ain't got no problem. <laughs> she, she'll have a planned out before she, they go. That's good because Sarah yeah. won't do that. No, Darian will do it. Tamara might. She's Does like, she, Tamara I have, like that? I have two Tituses. <laughs> she's a, she's a, she. You well, don't. You think, needed you, someone like that because you, you're obviously not the planner. I'm not. I, I well, really then good. You see, God I like, put us in your <laughs> lives for a reason. <laughs> I like to. I like to kind of. I guess I get that from dad. Like spontaneous. Just, whatever. Whatever just, happens, you right. kind of go with the flow. Yeah, it's almost like an adventure because yeah. you don't know. What's well, there's happen. a rock. Let's take the left side. But, but let's take the right side. That's, that's, both have benefits and and cons. That's to and cons. a point. That's to a point. Some things you need. Like if you go on vacation, you're spending money. Like it needs to be planned. Like mm-hmm. you don't just like. Oh, we're in the city now. What are we gonna do? That's not fun. <laughs> um. But, um, yeah, no, she's definitely good at that. Like, you don't vacation. She's like one of those types. You don't vacation when you go on vacation. Like, it's literally like itinerary out, you're, and you're, you're, you're get tired, this, and then we got to do this, and then we got to do that. So you're tired when you get home. Yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be tired, I guarantee you. And then watch what's going to happen on that fourth day. <laughs> we're going to want to sleep. Yeah. Like, let's go, get up. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was watching something with that Phil Robertson. They went over to Hawaii, and he said he said in the hotel room 
watching Jason Bourne. <laughs> and they're, they're going like, we're going to go here. And he's like, <laughs> he's up and say right here. <laughs> well, cool. I guess we'll have to, I just have to talk and figure that out then. See if they want to do it. That would be really, that would, I get, that would really add a cool dynamic and. Well, who's going to figure out how to get the birds home? That's easy. Yeah, that's pretty easy, dude. That's easy. Just wrap we them up. We literally, the day them. before we leave, we're shipping them. Ship them. And by the time we get home, they're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Because we already know. We, dude, me and him have bought a freezer dude, on a trip about that. and put it in our hotel room and froze our birds because there was no freezer in there. So <laughs> we could ship them. The, these. That was in a Walmart freezer. <laughs> we won't tell you the rest of that story, but <laughs> yeah. And shipped them to old uh, Shane Smith. But they were a little bit immature, as you can tell. His face, their faces weren't plumed out all the way yet, but we, we, we were warned of that. <laughs> it was early. But dude, well, huge going in December shooting one. That's gonna be studs. I'm I'm still gonna shoot more. Like I'm shooting whatever. Like I'm still gonna. I would almost get another one mounted. I know. Because I was Cause honestly, dude. Even our tails aren't as long as they can get. Mm-hmm. And the plumage, like just on the face, I how the black, mind a, yeah, there's white in there. I wouldn't mind face. a flying one. Yeah, I know. Kind of wish I would have did that. But they're still cool. Only do dead mounts anymore. That'd be fun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's I'll not a bad it. idea either, though. That'd be cool. Like, two or three dead mounted? L- like laying? Get you mm-hmm. a net. Some dude, net behind be there. A little buoy. A little starfish. Yeah, with See, the that's the other part. This chip's going to cost even more, because then... Which I guess I don't I don't have any... Rush to mount it. At current situation, I have zero mounts waiting. <laughs> dude. If you think about it, I just saved a bunch of money. <laughs> Current mounts. Even though, I, oh, yeah, no, we won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, Travis has been waiting for his deer heads for like a year now. Oh. Hey, Someone's, they're in a safe place. Yeah, some coyotes all chewing on. No, they're on. not. They're, they're in my well house. Okay. They're safe, hanging up, drying out. All right. They're fine. All right. I, here's the thing. And, and, and Talon knows how to do it, and I hate. Velvet. Your your cat your cat no, your, your my cat, cat can't get to it. Your it's cat, locked. No, no. I'm saying your cat got to, to something else. So so <sighs> that was in the house. This isn't in the house. Well, that was your trifecta mount. Destroyed all three birds. Travis did a cinnamon Drake. I mean a cinnamon. What do you, what do, you do, do when your daughter's cat chews up <sighs> you your like one of your favorite mounts? Uh, and she's saying, "Sorry, daddy." Sorry, Daddy. <laughs> Dude, there's nothing you can do. Because I was so bummed. I broke my heart. There's no rewind that. buttons. Just that was my first cinnamon. I think no, it wasn't my first. But your blue wing. That blue wing. That was, was my. Stud. F- Dude, that was your first blue wing. I remember exactly where I was I when I shot, when that, shot that. Yeah, you were. We were in the same pond. No, I wasn't there. Yes, you were. Oh, that was that day. Yes, was me and you, you together. Jake, or me and no, Jake. Jake. Yeah, me and Shane were together, and me and you. That and was Jake. an awesome day. Well, at least they weren't king eiders, you know. <laughs> yeah, brother Hilton just asked me the other day about going. Oh, are we still going on King Eider? I was like, <laughs> I wish. Okay, let's go to Greenland. Wait, who was who was we talking to the other day? Somebody was talking the other day about. Oh, I know who it was Zach Clark. He said that he can he can get a emperor goose thing over the counter because he's an Alaskan resident. Yes, or I he, know. He told me that. Something like that. Yeah. Yes. Anything or something like that. Yeah, hamburgers. Yeah. He's smart because he kept, because he's active duty, he can still keep that. But as soon as he's not, he can't have that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Like, you better take advantage of that. Yeah. If you can get one. Yeah, I could have did that stuff too. And I just, I don't know why I didn't do that. I didn't know about it really, to be honest with you. But, all right, that's probably a good point, Tim. I guess you guys will hear maybe in a couple months what we're doing here. Maybe we'll talk about <laughs> this again, see how this. <laughs> They're opening a separate account. Start saving, brother. We'll see you next year, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> same time, same wow. place. <laughs> no, you better get ready, no. son. I'm rolling deep on these podcasts, so you'll have to be coming over a lot. And the the thing, the good thing is, is just the lifestyle and work schedule and all that stuff for me. That's what's really got it's a lot more of uniform. Yeah, set. So, anyways, all right, guys. Well, and thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Travis, for joining me for episode three hundred. Pretty cool. We'll see you guys on the next one.